Hello everybody, Mr. Longo here. We're going to spend this video on applying the properties of the parallelograms that we learned in the last video. So to start, these are pretty basic and simple. They use all of the properties that we learned. Remember we learned that opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, same side interior angles are supplementary, and that the diagonals bisected each other. Now we do know that the opposite sides are parallel, but that is the definition of a parallelogram, so we're not going to be technically using those right now. So all of these you can probably handle on your own if you understand the properties. So my suggestion would be to pause this video already and see if you can find all of these missing pieces that we're asking for. As soon as you're ready, click play and we'll go through the step by step. So go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so this first example here, we're going to look for X and Y, which are sides. Since the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then X is going to be 10 and Y is going to be 14 because they are going to be the exact same length as the side opposite. Okay, so the first one, super simple. Nothing to worry about. Let's move on. In the second example, we're going to have our angle properties take place. So we would learn two things about angles. Opposite angles are congruent. They have the same measure. And we also learned that same side angles are supplementary. So if this guy's 125, angle C is going to add up to 180 width 125, meaning it's 55 degrees. So angle A has got to be the exact same because they are opposite. So angle A is 55 degrees, angle B is 125 degrees, and angle C is 55 degrees. All right, all right, let's move on. Last one in this row applies the diagonals property. So we have to look at our given AB is 24. Don't forget about that. And we're going to find M and N knowing that the diagonals cut each other in half. So if this little piece is 5, N is also 5. But AB was given as 24, which means if we cut that in half, we would have 12 and 12. So M is 12 and N is 5. And if you got all of those correct, then you are already applying the properties of parallelograms that we learned in the last video. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it a little step further. We're going to apply some algebra to it. So again, if you understand the properties, algebra, that's just the part that comes second. The most important part is, do you understand the properties so you can set up an equation? So go ahead and pause the video, if you feel comfortable, and try these guys. Give it a shot. All right, let's see how you did. So if we look at this, we have some sides given. The only thing we know about the sides of a parallelogram is that the opposites are congruent. So we can set 3x minus 6 equal to x plus 4 because we should remember that they are congruent. And when we solve for x here, we're going to have 2x is equal to 10, so x is equal to 5. So all we have to do is substitute 5 back in. So plug it in here. We have 15 minus 6 is 9. 5 plus 4 is 9. So that checks out that they algebraically work. 5 plus 2 is 7, and this guy has to be 7 as well. So all you have to do now is add all of those up, and you should end up with a perimeter of 32 units. Okay, so if you got that right, good job. You're just applying opposite sides are congruent. Next example, we see that we have opposite angles here. So remember, we have two different properties about angles. Opposites are congruent and the supplementary ones are on the same side. We're going to apply both of those right here. Since these are opposite, we're going to set them equal. So we have 4x minus 50 is equal to 2x plus 30. And then solve again. 
So we have 2x is equal to 80, so x is equal to 40 degrees. So once we substitute 40 in here, that's going to give us 2 times 40 is 80 plus 30 is 110 degrees. So angle 1 is the same side interior with it. It's not the opposite. So angle 1 is supplementary to 110. So angle 1 is 70 degrees. All right. So again, that example messed around with the angle properties of a parallelogram. The last example, this deals with the diagonals. And you have to remember the diagonals cut each other in half. The diagonals of a parallelogram are not always congruent. So we know those two are congruent, and we know these two are congruent. So we can go ahead and set 2x minus 5 equal to x plus 3. So x is going to be equal to 8. To find the length of AB, all we have to do is substitute 8 into x plus 1, so we know this is 9 and this is 9, so the length of AB is 18. And there you go. Now you are applying the properties of a parallelogram and solving using algebra. Okay, so we do have three more problems for you to work on if it's going to be helpful to you. Um, the first two are just more with algebra, but the last one's a little bit of a challenge. It uses some of the properties we know from back in the day as well with alternate interior angles and vertical angles and all that stuff to find nine missing angles when you were only given um, 50, 80, and 40. Those are the only ones I'm giving you for this entire example and you have to find the other nine missing angles. So again, last three problems of the video, pause the video, give them a try on your own, Click play when you're ready, and let's see how you do. First example, these are same side interior angles. So you do not set them equal to each other. You have to add these up to 180 degrees because supplementary means they sum 180. So we have 6x plus 10 plus 4x plus 20 is equal to 180. So 10x plus... 30 is equal to 180. Subtract the 30, divide by 10, and you end up with x is equal to 15. Angle 1 is opposite of 4x plus 20, so that's the one we're going to want to plug it back into. So 15 times 4 is 60, plus 20 is 80, so angle 1 is going to be 80 degrees. Hope you got that guy right. Second example. This time, we're telling you that the perimeter is 68. And we know that these two were given. Nice thing about parallelograms is they're going to be the same properties every time. The left guy is 2x plus 5 because opposites are congruent. Same with the bottom being 3x plus 4. So now all you have to do is add all four sides up and set it equal to 68. So 3x plus 2x plus 3x plus 2x is... 10x plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 is 18, and that's equal to 68. So subtract the 18, 10x is going to be equal to 50, so x is equal to 5. Okay, there you go. Now this last one, that's the challenge. If you put all of your old properties into perspective, it's not that bad. Just treat each thing individually. Obviously, you do not have to do this in order. So I'm guessing many of you probably just started in the middle. So if this guy is 80, then you know that angle 3 is also 80 because they are vertical angles. And from a long time ago, you probably also remember that a linear pair is supplementary. So angle 2 is going to be 100, and angle 6 is going to be 100. So we found all of those. We can look at a couple other things before we apply some of the other parallelogram properties and all that. That in the top triangle, we remember the triangles will always add up to 180 degrees. So if this angle is 50 and that's 100, you have 150, so you're missing 30 degrees. Same on the right. 80 plus 40 is 120, so you're missing 60. 
So there, we're almost done, and we've just used vertical angles, linear pair, and triangles adding up to 180. So now we're just going to use the parallel line properties because we know that a parallelogram has to have opposite sides parallel. It's the definition. So angle 1 is 30 degrees. If we go back to the properties of parallel lines, we're going to remember that these are alternate interior, which means they are congruent. So angle 7 is going to be 30 degrees. And we know based on triangles adding up to 180 that if these two are 130, angle 8 is going to be 50. Last thing, using the same property, doesn't matter which one you want to start with. If this guy is 40, alternate interior angles will tell you that angle 5 is also 40. And then 40 plus 80 is 120, so angle 4 is also going to be 60 degrees. Okay? So then to fill this out, all you would have to do is go list everything that you just found. So angle 1 is 30, angle 2 is 100, angle 3 is 80, angle 4 was 60, angle 5 is 40, angle 6 is 100, angle 7 is 30, angle 8 is 50, and angle 9 is 60. And if you got all of those right, pat yourself on the back. That's a good job. All right. This is Longo, and I am out. See you. Bye.